Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shankar De and today in this session I will discuss obstetric long case, history taking and examination. I will discuss structure of history writing in obstetric long case. This format will be helpful for you in your examination for writing different long cases in obstetrics like normal pregnancy, preeclampsia, eclampsia, antipartum hemorrhage like placenta previa abruptio placenta, postdated pregnancy, intrauterine growth retardation, pregnancy with previous caesarean section, intrauterine fetal death, bridge presentation, transverse lie, twin pregnancy, anemia, pregnancy with anemia, pregnancy with heart disease, pregnancy with jaundice, pregnancy with diabetes mellitus, RH negative pregnancy, premature rupture of membrane, preterm labor, pregnancy with bad obstetric history. So these are the long cases. It, this format will be helpful for you for writing these long cases in your obstetric examination. So let's begin the session. Before going to the actual format, I just want to mention some common guideline that you should follow during your examination. First, you should build rapport with the patient and before taking history, you should greet, greet the patient like good morning ma'am or shuprabhat like this. You should show empathy to the patient. You should record only the relevant points during history taking. Do not record unnecessary points and do not get irritated during history taking. So let's begin the session with the actual format of history taking. First of all, you should note down patient particulars. In your examination, first you should note down patient particulars. Under the heading of patient particulars, you should note down name of the patient, age of the patient. Sex is not required because uh, usually of department of obstetrics deals with female patient. So name of the patient, age of the patient, address of patient, occupation of the patient, religion, ethnicity, duration of marriage and history of infertility, socioeconomic status, husband occupation, date of admission, date of examination and bed number and you should also record gravita and parity in this section also. So name, age, address, occupation, religion, ethnicity, duration of marriage, history of infertility, socioeconomic status, husband, occupation, date of admission, date of examination, bed number, gravida and parity. So these are the points that you should record under the headings of patient particulars. After patient particulars, you should record the proper history or history proper. History proper includes chief complaints, history of present illness, menstrual history, history of present pregnancy or present obstetric history, past obstetric history or history of previous pregnancy, past history, family history, personal history, drug history, treatment history, etc. So, first of all, chief complaints. Chief complaints. When the patient has definite chief complaints, then you should write them in chronological order. Some patients do not have any chief complaint, then it is better not to write amenorrhea as a chief complaint. You should write patient is admitted for safe confinement. So whenever the patient do not have any chief complaint, you should write the patient is admitted for safe confinement. And when the patient has a definite chief complaint, then you should write the chief complaints in chronological order with the with um, time maximum duration with first to, first chief complaint will be of maximum duration and uh, after which you should follow them in chronological order like one two three next history of present illness history of present illness and chief complaints may be like uh, paleness of body in case of 
uh, pregnancy with anemia, some discharge for vagina in case of premature rupture of membrane, uh, then bilateral pedal edema or swelling in case of preeclampsia. So this can be chief complaints. After chief complaints, you should write history of present illness. This is not required when patient do not have any chief complaints when patient get admitted for safe confinement. This is required history of present illness whenever the patient has any chief complaints. So you should elaborate each chief complaints in history of present illness. So you have to elaborate the chief complaints with onset, duration, progression, aggravating factors and relieving factors, nature, severity along with some negative symptoms like absence of pain in case of APH which is against the diagnosis of accidental hemorrhage or mention any other relevant symptoms in present illness. Then menstrual history. This part is very important in case of obstetric long case history taking. First of all, in menstrual history, you should record LMP or first day of last menstrual period. So first you should record the LMP, then EDD, expected date of delivery. Expected date of delivery is calculated by Negelis rule. The expected date of delivery is obtained by adding 9 months 7 days with LMP or last normal menstrual period. Then you should calculate the period of amenorrhea from this LMP to the, from this LMP to uh, today's date. Uh, next age at Menarch. So, in menstrual history, this part is also important, age at manner, duration of menstruation, like is it 4 to 5 days or more than 4 to 5 days or less, you should record the uh, duration of menstruation in days. Next, interval in days. Uh, now interval in days like 28 days cycle inter uh, 28 days interval in between two cycles uh, or is it uh, more or is it less you should record them in days like interval in days next regularity of menstrual cycle is the menstrual cycle is regular or irregular you should mention pain during menstruation or any history of dysmenorrhea amount of bleeding is it moderate or heavy next any clot is there presence of any clot in the menstrual blood or not a presence of any occasional clot or not any foul smell is discharge present or not this these are the things you should record in menstrual history Ne, amount of bleeding can be assessed by number of pad used per day. Next, after menstrual history, you should record history of present pregnancy or present obstetric history. So, history of present pregnancy or present obstetric history. First of all, you should write pregnancy type. Is it natural or is it by any artificial reproduction technology? Then how the pregnancy is detected? Like by urine pregnancy detection kit or by USG. And when the pregnancy is detected? After LN period, last menstrual period. Then you should record about number of antenatal visit or antenatal care received. Or is, is this a case of booked? Is this a book case or unbooked case. Book case. Booked case means when there is history of more than three antenatal visit in a particular hospital setup. Next, you should record first, second and third trimester events like his, any history of threatened abortion like bleeding per vagina or any hyper emesis graviridum, morning sickness in case of first trimester, in second trimester any history of uh, urinary tract infection like lower abdominal pain, uh, 
লোয়ার অ্যাবডোমিনাল পেন বার্নিং মিকচুরেশন এনি ব্লিডিং পার ভ্যাজাইনা ডিক্রিজ ফিটাল মুভমেন্ট এক্সেট্রা অ্যান্ড ইন থার্ড ট্রাইমেস্টার ইভেন লাইক অ্যানিমিয়া পেলনেস অব দ্য বডি এপিএইচ অর অ্যান্টিফার্টাম হেমারেজ এনি সাইন্স অফ প্রি এক্লামশিয়া লাইক বায়োলাটারাল পেডাল ইডিমা এনি অমিনা সাইনাম এক্লামশিয়া লাইক অ্যাবডোমিনাল পেন ভ্যাজাইনাল ডিসচার্জ হেড এক ব্লাডিং অব ভিশান ডিসোরিয়েন্টেশন ভমিটিং এক্সেট্রা and you should also record date of quickening or perception of first fetal movement when the mother perceive first fetal movement or quickening next perception is there perception of regular fetal movements or not you should record in the history of present pregnancy or present obstetric history then immunization status is the mother received two dose of tetanus uh, immunization in nearest healthcare settings or uh, one dose of tetanus toxoid injection in case of pregnancy within 3 years of last pregnancy next drugs drugs intake including intake of iron folic acid tablet or is there any history of teratogenic drug intake or is there any uh, history of drug uh, drugs like uh, eltroxine or thyroxine so any drug for chronic illness is there any history of radiation exposure during pregnancy any complications of present pregnancy like anemia in pregnancy rh negative pregnancy uh, aph threatened abortion etc any medical or surgical problem you should record uh, in this history of present pregnancy section and is there any history of blood transfusion or not so these are the things you should record in history of present pregnancy pregnancy type detection antenatal care booked or unbooked cases first second third trimester events quickening perception on fetal movements immunization drug history radiation exposure history present pregnancy complication medical surgical history along with any history of blood transfusion or any medical illness so these are the things you should record in history of present pregnancy after history of present pregnancy you should write past obstetric history or history of previous pregnancy so history of previous pregnancy under previous pregnancy first of all you should record the gravida gravida means a pregnancy state both present and past irrespective of period of gestation if this is a first pregnancy you should write the patient is primary gravida or when the patient is multi gravida it is better to write second third fourth gravida so gravida is a pregnancy state both present and past irrespective of number of gestation and parity means only previous pregnancies reaching beyond the age of viability and parity is written by uh, adding some uh, by adding some suffix like p x plus y where x means previous viable pregnancies or y means previous pregnancies not reaching the age of viability or abortion you can also add z that means number of living children then you should record the living issue right nil in case of primary gravida then last child birth uh, last child birth how many years ago then you should make a table and record the um, record this point for every pregnancy like serial number for the first pregnancy you should write serial number 1 then age of the child pregnancy events during that pregnancy like antenatal events first second third trimester events labor events is the labor is spontaneous or induced is there any history of premature rupture of membrane or any prolonged labor mode of delivery of that pregnancy like vaginal delivery forceps delivery vaginal delivery with or without episiotomy forceps delivery or ventus delivery lucs or lower uterine cesarean section if lucs indication place of delivery is it home or institutional and who conducted the delivery is it by healthcare professional or trained attendants or not next history postpartum period or puerperium history is there any complication like pph sepsis non union of episiotomy or puerperal sepsis puerperal pyrexia any breast complication or urinary tract 
কমপ্লিকেশন নাম্বার অফ হসপিটাল স্টে ইনটেক অফ আর এইচ অ্যান্টি রিমিনোগ্লোবিন এক্সেট্রা দেন ইউ শুড রেকর্ড দ্য স্টেটাস অফ দ্য বেবি ফর দ্যাট প্রেগনেন্সি ইজ ইট লিভিং অর ডেট ইফ ডেট স্টিল বন অর বন অর নিউনেটাল ডেথ দেন বার্থ ওয়েট অফ দ্য বেবি কন্ডিশন অফ দ্য বেবি এট বার্থ ইজ দেন ইউ বার্থ অ্যাসফিক্সিয়া সেক্স অফ দ্য বেবি অ্যান্ড হিস্ট্রি অ্যাবাউট ব্রেস্ট ফিডিং অ্যান্ড ইমিউনাইজেশন ফলোইং বার্থ so these are the things you should record in a table in chronological order in past obstetric history after past obstetric history after past obstetric history you should record past history past medical history and past surgical history in past medical history you should ask the patient about any chronic illness like diabetes hypertension bronchial asthma thyroid disorder that is very important tuberculosis renal disease heart disease epilepsy rheumatic fever rickets any history of blood transfusion etc and in past surgical history you should ask the patient about any general surgery like cholecystectomy appendicectomy or any laparotomy or any gynecological surgery like myomectomy oophorectomy any vaginal surgery vesico vaginal fistula repair any amputation of cervix or further gill operation encerclage operation history of any and you should also record history of any anesthetic difficulties in previous pregnancy that is all about past history in family history you should record family history of diabetes hypertension tuberculosis multiple pregnancy any blood disorder like hemophilia thalassemia history of birth of baby with any congenital anomalies like some neural tube defect or any other congenital or chromosomal disorder like down klein filter turner etc then you should record the personal history like bowel bladder sleep appetite addiction any history of uh, retention of urine etc so in uh, personal history you should record sleep bowel bladder appetite any addiction etc next is contraceptive history duration and time sometimes withdrawal of oral contraceptive may lead to amenorrhea during which patient may conceive and lmp is fallacious that is that is why you should also record contraceptive history after personal history and followed by drug history is the mother is taking any drug for any chronic illness like for thyroid disorder eltroxin for known case of diabetic any anti diabetic agent or insulin etc or for epilepsy any anti epileptic agent etc that you should record in drug history so this is all about history proper after history proper you should do physical examination in physical examination first of all you have to do general survey in general survey you should record the following thing first of all higher function of the patient is the patient is alert conscious cooperative then apparent age of the patient is it corroborated with mentioned age or not then decubitus of the patient or choice of position next faces built average drawer for tall nutrition is it average undernourished or obese pallor icterus or jaundice cyanosis clubbing edema neck vein neck glands neck nodes pulse bp respiration temperature and head to toe examination along with the weight of the patient along with weight of the patient and ed uh, weight and height of the patient so these are the things you should uh, record in general survey higher function apparent age build nutrition faces decubitus pallor cyanosis icterus clubbing edema neck vein or jvp neck glands neck nodes weight height pulse bp respiration temperature leg veins etc after general survey you should examine the cardiovascular system respiratory system gastro intestinal system genito urinary and neurological uh, system if there is any uh, problem or uh, chief complaints related to this symptom otherwise you may write down these systems are within normal limit uh, after doing 
proper examination next most important next is the most important part is in obstetric long case that is obstetric examination this is the most important part in obstetric long case so obstetric examination before obstetric examination you should follow some rules that a female attendant should always be present during examination of a patient so a female attendant is required before examining the patient in case a attendant is not present then always ask for her and explain the patient what are you going to do before examination an obstetric examination includes examination of breast a abdominal examination this part is the most important part for obstetric examination in this includes inspection of abdomen palpation and auscultation then vaginal examination so first of all examination of breast examination of breast ordinarily not done if done you should record the following changes during pregnancy like nipple is it normal flat depressed crack nipple or fissure nipple then areola and skin condition like healthy or unhygienic and any discharge per nipple present or not so these are the things you should uh, examine in examination of breast but that is not ordinarily done next abdominal examination and vaginal examination vaginal examination this is also not ordinarily done so vaginal examination is not usually done next is obstetric uh, sometimes only uh, in uh, sometimes in case of vaginal examination only inspection of the vulva perineum is done in case in some cases like whenever the patient is having complain of discharge per vagina like in cases of aph or antepartum hemorrhage or prom leakage of liquor or any puperium cases so in case of these cases aph prom on puperium um only inspection of vulva or perineum is done otherwise vaginal examination and breast breast examination is not done ordinarily and most important part is abdominal examination now i am going to the proper abdominal examination part that includes inspection palpation and auscultation first of all inspection before abdominal examination there are some preparatory procedure that should be done Uh, always ask the patient to evacuate her bladder before examination so, so you should ask the patient to evacuate the bladder before examination always keep an female attendant preferably one nurse staff nurse second uh, stand on the right side of the patient always you should stand on right side of the patient explain the patient what you you are going to do take consent make dorsal position thigh and knees both partially flex so you should flex thigh and knees partially then abdomen is exposed fully and others part are covered well so these are the things you should follow before examination that is very important and inspection first things you should uh, inspect that is shape of the abdomen is it enlarged or unduly enlarged the abdomen may be unduly enlarged because of some reason like multiple pregnancy polyhydramnios large baby false lmp uh, gestational diabetes mellitus baby with macrosomia or twin pregnancy any pregnancy related complication like hydatiform mole or gestational trophoblastic disease any uterine fibroid or tumor etc so in these cases abdomen may be hugely enlarged so you have to first uh, so uh, uh, we have to first note down size like it is enlarged or unduly enlarged next is shape of the abdomen is it spherical cylindrical or pyriform shape of gravid uterus is usually spherical so shape is spherical cylindrical or pyriform size is it enlarged or unduly enlarged then ovoid the whether the ovoid is longitudinal or transverse or oblique usually in case of longitudinal lie ovoid is longitudinal and in transverse lie ovoid is transverse so ovoid depends on the lie of the baby or fetus then 
you should inspect the fundus for any uh, is it convex or any notching present over there then you should inspect the supra pubic region the area just above the symphysis pubis is it convex or flattened then you should also note the condition of the skin is it healthy or unhygienic sometimes some infection lying ring of or any eczematous lesion may present then you should know uh, inspect the condition of umbilicus is it normal inverted or inverted is there any presence of scar or not if presence if scar is present is it healthy on unhealthy or ugly looking or any longitudinal is it longitudinal scar or transverse scar or is it any scar of previous surgeries then is there any presence of stria gravidarum or linea nigra so these are the things you should you should inspect so first of all size first of all size of the abdomen then shape of the abdomen is it spherical cylindrical or piriform in this case this is spherical then ovoid is it longitudinal transverse oblique then fundus this region fundus then supra pubic region this region just above the pubic symphysis then condition of the skin then position of the umbilicus and condition of umbilicus then linea nigra this pigmented line this any presence of any scar like this line this lines these are the stria gravidarum so and in presence of any scar or not so these are the things you should inspect after inspection uh, then comes palpation of abdomen general principles of palpation palpation should be done very gently and don't try to palpate during braxton hick contraction it is done in relaxed condition of uterus and all the grips are palpated facing towards the mother face except the second pelvic grip or fourth leopold maneuver which is done facing towards patient legs and do the preparatory procedures as mentioned in before inspection like ask the patient to evacuate the bladder always keep an female attendant stand on the right side of the patient uh, explain the patient what you, you are going to do make dorsal position with legs high and is partially flexed expose the abdomen fully and uh, as um, as uh, exam uh, final year examination is usually held in uh, winter season so always you should rub the palmar surface of the both hand to warm it, warm up um, before doing examination so you should rub your hand, both uh, you should rub the palmar surface of the both hand before doing the palpation so procedure first of all you should you should record the fundal height fundal height is usually recorded at uh, gestational age or in terms of weeks of gestation you should place your hand just above the fundus in this area and note down the uh, note down the fundal height in terms of weeks of gestation like if the fundus lies over here or just above the pubic symphysis the pregnancy is of 12 week gestation and at the level of umbilicus it is 24 week gestation so here it is uh, fundus here if fundus lies here it is 12 weeks of gestation at pubic symphysis here it is uh, 16 then here 20 at the level of umbilicus 24 then 28 then 32 at the level of zephy sternum 36 and after 36 weeks you then fundus uh, lies just below uh, here at the level of 30 weeks of just uh, 32 weeks of gestation so this is 12 weeks of gestation 12 16 20 24 36 at the level of zephy sternum and 40 again at the level of 32 weeks of gestation so uh, you should first record the fundal height after fundal height you should measure the symphysio fundal height the distance between pubic symphysis and fundus 
and sympatio fundal height is measured in supine position with both leg extended so you should extend the leg of patient before measuring the sympatio fundal height so in this way sympatio fundal height is measured from the fundus tip of fundus to pubic symphysis a non stretchable tape is placed and sympatio fundal height is measured with uh, uh leg of the patient in extended position so this is sympatio fundal height after 20 weeks of gestation the normal height of fundus in centimeter approximates the fetal gestational age until 36 week of pregnancy after sympatio fundal height the most important part of obstetrical examination that is obstetric griefs or leopold maneuver there is four obstetric griefs or Leopold maneuver. First of all, this is first Leo, first Leopold maneuver or first grip that is fundal grip. So this is fundal grip or first Leopold maneuver procedure. You, uh, uh, during grip examination for first three fundal grip, you should face towards the face of the patient and during fourth grip examination, you should face towards the patient legs so this is first grip or first leopold or fundal grip fundal grip so first face towards the mother face and using both hands palpate the whole area of the fundus so using both hand palpate the both area of the fundus gently do not use the fingertips use the pulp of flat fingers in an the things that should be inferred from this examination if you feel soft broad and irregularly immobile structure that is podalic end of the fetus and if you find out smooth globular heart structure that is mobile or balatable so that is head or kephal Mm, that is head end of the fetus in case of breech presentation so if you feel soft broad irregularly immobile podalic end so that is in case of cephalic presentation um, the buttock region is felt and in case of breech presentation head is felt as smooth globular heart mobile or balotable structure or neither of the fetal pole is palpated in case in the fundal area in case of transverse lie next after first level maneuver this is second level maneuver this is lateral grip or umbilical grip so this is second grip lateral grip or umbilical grip or second level maneuver stand facing mother's face bring both hand downwards along the anterolateral aspect of uterus and palpate one after another side when left side when this left side is palpated the uterus is steadied by placing the left hand over the right side of the uterus and vice versa so this is lateral or umbilical grip information that should be obtained from lateral grip position of the fetal back and limbs you can also assess tonicity amount of liquor size of the fetus etc if back back is usually identified smooth curved heart filled structures and when there is difficulty in identification of the fetal back place one of your hands over the fundus and press it gently downwards towards the pelvis now back will be prominent and limbs are usually recognized by knob like structure so back is recognized by smooth carved heart filled structures and limbs are recognized by knob like fillings after second leopold that is third leopold third leopold maneuver it is also known as pelvic grip or first pelvic grip for pelvic grip or first pelvic grip you should stand facing towards mother face outstretch the palm outstretch the palm and place it just above the pubic symphysis now four fingers four fingers are placed over the left side so that ulnar border this ulnar 
border of the palm lies at the lies at the level of upper border of the symphysis pubis uh, symphysis pubis and this thumb is placed on the right side so these four fingers are placed on the left side and this thumb is placed on the right side and this ulnar border is placed just over the pubic symphysis and by approx after placing this by approximating the thumb and four fingers the presenting part is grasped and it is when it is not engaged and mobility is tested from side to side so you should grasp the presenting part and try to mobilize the part present here and the information that you will get from first pelvic grip or pelvic grip the presentation engagement or uh, engagement is clearly determined from this grip then uh, second pelvic grip or fourth leopold maneuver this is second pelvic grip or um, second pelvic grip or fourth leopold maneuver only this grip is uh, palpated by facing towards the feet of the patient so uh, during examination of this grip you should face towards the uh, feet of the patient four fingers of both hands are laid on the sides of midline at the lower pole of the uterus above and parallel to the inguinal ligament so your four uh, four fingers of both hands should be placed parallel to the inguinal ligament on the lower aspect of the uterus on both side then this finger are pushed downwards and backwards to reach the lower pole then your you should you should move your hands downwards and backwards to reach the lower pole of the uterus so that the pole can be palpated well near the pelvic grip what informations will you get from second pelvic grip first detection of presentation or presenting part whether it's engaged or not and the attitude and how will you say that head is engaged or not if head can be if uh, during if during third leopold maneuver if uh, head can be moved from side to side that means head is not engaged if head cannot be moved from side to side that means head, head is engaged it if both the sinciput and occiput is palpable they, that means head is not engaged if the poles sinciput and occiput cannot be palpable that means one and only one pole may be palpable that means head is engaged uh, and if during examination of fourth grip or second pelvic grip if examining fingers cannot be insinuated below the presenting part if you cannot be able to insinuate this fingers below the presenting part or if the fingers remain divergent or parallel that means head is engaged and if if finger can be insinuated below the presenting part they are they are convergent that means head is not engaged and you may also determine the uh, engagement by fifth rule if three fifth or more is palpable by abdominal fifth method that means head is not engaged and if two fifth or less palpable that means head is engaged so that is all about leopold maneuver or uh grip obstetrical grip examination so this is first fundal fundal grip that is lateral or umbilical grip second grip that is third grip pelvic maneuver or first pelvic grip and that is second pelvic grip or fourth leopold maneuver so these are the obstetrical grip first second third and fourth next after palpation and uh, another thing in palpation in case of previous of uh, previous history of cesarean section you should note down any scar tenderness after uh, abdomen uh, palpation then is auscultation uh, you have to auscultate for fetal heart sound so for, uh, for as as usual ask the patient to evacuate the bladder uh, make the patient in dorsal position abdomen is exposed stand on the right side then procedures by lateral grip uh, always fetal back is located then bell or diaphragm after uh, after recognizing the fetal back bell or diaphragm of is placed this diaphragm bell is placed over the fetal back of uh, fetal back then alternatively uh, pinar stethoscope or fetal doppler also may be used this is fetal dop this is doppler so bell is placed over the back of the fetus and fh is f 
एच एस और फिटल हार्ट साउंड इज हार्ट वेर देर इज मैक्सिमाम इंटेंसिटी यूजुअलि अन स्पाइन अम्बिकल लाइन इनकेस अब अक्सिपिटो एंटेरियर पजिशन एंड हुईन यू हियर द फिटल हार्ट साइन फिक्स द डायफ्राम और बेल अब द स्टेथोस्कोप बै रईट हैंड सो यू शुड फिक्स द बेल अब द स्टेथो उथ रईट हैंड एंड उथ लेफ्ट हैंड यू शुड पैलपेट द रेडियल पालस अब द मदार एंड कम्पेयर द एफ एच एस उथ मैटरनल पालस नाउ कीप यूर आईज ओवर द रिस्ट वाच एंड काउंट फर वन मिनिट सो नोट डाउन वेदार दिस एफ एच एस ए is regular not rate of the fhs beats per minute rhythm regular or not and situation it what level maximum intensity of fhs is located then you should also auscultate for uterine shuffle so this is all about auscultation after auscultation you should write down the summary of the case and you may write this investigation supplier required in some cases like rh negative pregnancy so rh report or abo grouping uh, hemoglobin report in case of uh, if it is available in case of anemia pregnancy with anemia any serology report or any report like urine examination in case of preeclampsia but that is usually not given during your examination so you should write down the summary after write down the summary you should write the provisional diagnosis and after provisional diagnosis is you should write down differential diagnosis if applicable you may write down the dd or may not in provisional diagnosis you should note down the patient particulars along with chief complaints some um relevance uh, relevance history from history proper along with positive findings in physical examination and obstetric examination so this is all about obstetric lung case so i think you will love this session and in this format you should write down every lung case in your examination except puerperium lung case in our next session we will discuss puerperium lung case so if you love this video please like share comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel and also don't forget to press on the bell icon for up, for notifications about upcoming videos so stay tuned for the next clinical video all the best thank you